says, Good morning and welcome to our touch point today. Once again, my name is Godwith Austin, your regular host and anchor on this channel. Like we used to do it, we pick our topics, we elaborate on them scripturally to understand the mind of God in those areas towards us. And by so doing, we have answered most of the lingering questions in our hearts that we have carried down over the years. This morning is not different from what we've been doing and we will be taking as the topic acceptance. And uh, by the grace of God, we have gone so far in it and uh, we are going to continue from that where we stopped yesterday. And in summary from what we did yesterday was, I did things I must never accept. And we said yes, sinful practices either by participating in them or working at them or dishonoring those things are dishonoring to God so we must not accept corruption from corrupt people because they will certainly cause us to become corrupt alright so this morning we are going into a new question that says how do I learn to accept those who are different from me how do I learn to accept those who are different from me. Alright, so in Deuteronomy chapter 10, 18 to 19, the Bible says, He ensures that orphans and widows and widows receive justice. He shows love to the foreigners living among you and gives them food and clothing. So you too must show love to foreigners. For you yourself were once foreigners in the land of Egypt. So you too must show love to foreigners. Or I say, for you yourself are what? Foreigners in the land of Egypt. Praise God. So, in Hebrews 13 verse 2, it says, Don't forget to show hospitality to strangers. For some who have done this have entertained angels without realizing it. So, in Matthew 25 verse 35, the Bible said, For I was hungry and you fed me. I was thirsty and you gave me a drink. I was a stranger and you invited me into your home. So almost everyone has had a time where they felt like an outsider and we are uncertain about how to adjust. All right? Almost everyone has had a need, if I take it again, and had a time where they needed help but we are too embarrassed to ask when we ask the humanity in everyone we meet treating them with kindness and dignity we show love and respect to the one who made them all right when we seek the humanity in everyone we meet treating them with kindness and dignity we show love and respect to the one who made them. And who made them? God. Matthew chapter 9, verse 11 to 12, the Bible said, But when the Pharisees saw this, they asked his disciples, Why does your leader eat with such scum? When Jesus heard this, he said, Healthy people don't need a doctor. Sick people do. Did you understand that? Healthy people don't need doctors, but sick people do. In Luke chapter 19, 2 and 5 to 10, Bible said, There was a man there and his name there named Zacchaeus. He was a chief tax collector in the region and he had become very rich. When Jesus came by the by he looked up at Zacchaeus and called him by name. Zacchaeus, he said, Quick, come down. I must be a guest in your home today. Zacchaeus quickly climbed down and took Jesus to his house in great excitement and joy. But the people were displeased. He, he had gone to be with the guest of a notorious sinner. They grumbled. Meanwhile, Zacchaeus stood before the Lord and said, I will give half of my wealth to the poor, Lord, and if I have cheated people on tax, 
on their taxes, I will give them back four times as much. Jesus responded, Salvation has come to his to this house today, for this man has shown himself to be a true son of Abraham. For the Son of Man came to seek and save who are lost. Amen. So another one in Matthew chapter 5, 3, 2 to 3 says, Suddenly a man with leprosy approached him and knelt before him. Lord, the man said, If you are willing, you can make me and make me clean. You can heal me and make me clean. Jesus reached out and touched him. I am willing, he said. Be healed and instantly the leprosy disappeared. In Jesus' days, prostitutes, tax collectors, and lepers were some of the least acceptable people around. Prostitutes made money off of sexual sin. Tax collectors like Zacchaeus not only worked for the Roman conqueror, but they cheated people and collected extra money for themselves. Lepers were disgusting, uh, their disease caused their bodies to literally not, not rot apart, and the disease was contagious, so they had to live on the outskirts of society. Yet Jesus knew these people who evoked such disgust were some of the people who most who most recognized their need for his message. In fact, one of those people, a tax collector called Matthew, deserve our thanks for writing much of what we know about Jesus. We may not like where people come from, what they are done, what they have done, or how they act, but like Jesus, we can recognize the glorious potential inside each and every person. All right. In Revelation chapter 7, 9 to 10, after this, I saw a vast crowd, too great to count, from every nation and tribe and people and language, standing in front of the throne and from the Lamb. They were clothed in white robes and held palm branches in their hands. And they were shouting with a great roar, Salvation comes from our God who sits on the throne and from the Lamb. In Acts of Apostles chapter 10 verse 34, the said, Then Peter replied, I see very clearly that God shows no favoritism. Then Peter replied, uh, like I said, Peter replied, I, I see clearly that God shows no what favoritism. In Romans 15 verse 7, that was said, Therefore, accept each other just as Christ has accepted you, so that God will be given glory. Alright? So God calls all kinds of all kinds to become part of the body of Christ. The unity of that body is crucial to each awareness to the world. Alright? Though our differences are real, and uh, sometimes deserve discussion. Those differences should never overshadow the central unity of our identity in Christ. We must know that we are one in Christ. We are many, but we are one body. The next question I said, how can I accept all of life's circumstances that come my way? Every situation that come my way, how do I accept them? 1 Corinthians 7 verse 17 says, each of you should continue to live in whatever situation the Lord has placed you and remain as you were when God first called you. This is my rule for all the churches. All right? This is my rule for all the churches. So, praise the Lord. In Romans chapter 8, verse 18, 25, 23 to 25, say, Yes. What we suffer now is nothing compared to the glory we will reveal, he will reveal to us later. And we believers also groan, even though we have the Holy Spirit within us as a foretaste of future glory, 
for we long for our bodies to be released from sin and suffering. We too wait with eager hope for the day when God will give us our full right as his adopted children, including the new bodies he has promised us. We were given this hope when we were saved. If we already have something, we don't need to hope for it. All right? So if we look forward to something we don't yet have, we must be patiently, we must patiently wait and, conf and the word confidently. Yet what we suffer now it has nothing or it has no comparison to what the glory will become that will be revealed later. Alright, so but Job replied in Job 2 verse 10, but Job replied, You talk like a foolish woman. Should we accept only good things from the hand of God and never anything bad? Alright? So in all this, the Bible says Job said nothing wrong. But you understand me? So Job said nothing wrong. Ecclesiastes 5, verse 19, the Bible said, And it is a good thing to receive word from God, and the good wealth and the good health to enjoy to enjoy it. To enjoy good work and accept your lot in life, this is indeed a gift from God. Alright? Is indeed a gift from God. Praise the Lord. We will stop there for now, but then, like we used to do, if there are persons who want to take a walk, enter into a journey with God this morning, the opportunity is there for you. I want you to say this prayer with me or after me. Say, Lord Jesus. Thank you for this opportunity. Thank you for teaching me your word. Thank you for the word in season. Father, I ask, O oh Lord, write my name in the book of life. Delete it from the book of death. Give me a new beginning. Give me a fresh start. I want to walk with you. I want to reign with you in eternity. Lord and our God, I pray. Breathe on me the breath of life. Help me, Satan, take your filthy hands out of my life. You didn't make me, and you cannot keep me. I am born again, and my life is hidden with Christ in God. Henceforth, trouble me not. Thank you, Jesus, I am born again. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. If you have prayed this prayer with me, I want you to continue to abide by the things that you have heard this morning. And many others in the other messages in this page. And as you do so, the Lord will build you up. He will bring out his best in you, which is his ultimate purpose in the name of Jesus. And to my viewers all over the world, I want to encourage you, please keep listening to these messages. Share what you have heard. Let others to benefit from this and be blessed as well. And as you do so, may the Lord beautify your feet. In Jesus' name we pray. Till we meet again, keep basking in the glory and the euphoria of the Most High. God bless.